independent in thought and punk rock in life. It's the Chad Benson Show. There is one copy of this report that they're going to be able to review in shifts, going back and forth between Democrats and Republicans hour by hour until all senators who want to review the report have had a chance to do so. So, one, just one copy, which is not unusual, by the way. And if you remember the TPP, I just want to point this out, right? Like, this is the craziness I've heard all morning. People yelling at me, oh, my God, just one copy. Because ah, that's what people do. And that's what I think people sound like when they're tweeting and texting and doing all those things. So, yes, one copy. Remember the TPP? You had to go down in, like, this vault, right? You had to be, like, strip searched. You had to go through the Silkwood shower. They took all of your electronics away. You could go in in an airtight room that was soundproofed. You couldn't breathe. You could only hold your breath. You could stare at it for 30 seconds, and you ran out, and you <sighs> And then that was that was what you got. It's one copy. They want to release it to the public. What's in it? What's not in it? Well, what we're hearing is from the people that matter. And I know that sounds weird. But there are people in this situation that matter more than others. Those people are Susan Collins, Jeff Flake, Lisa Murkowski. Murkowski's looking at it apparently right now. Jeff Flake says he finds no uh, corroborating stories that match up with hers and that there's no other additional information that that seems to damn him. And uh, Susan Collins said she thought it was a a uh, thorough investigation. But the playbook was never about what was in it or what wasn't in it. It was how long can we delay the inevitable from happening? We had many fears that this was a very limited process that would constrain the FBI from getting all the facts. Having received a thorough briefing on the documents, those fears have been realized. Ah, Chuck Schumer right there. He's. Can I just say this? I want you guys to understand, he's doing what he's supposed to be doing for his side of the aisle, right? He's doing all he is supposed to be doing to prevent this from happening. Understanding what the ramifications may be in his mind and in his base, which is the entire world's going to come to an end. So he's going to do everything he can as the right, I would expect the right to do in a situation like this. And guess what? It's going to happen eventually. Eventually, the Republicans will not be in control. Eventually, the opportunity for them to appoint a Supreme Court justice is going to be there and or something And they're going to do all they can to fight, 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 fight. Now, will they destroy somebody? Mm, That remains to be seen. So understand that. But last night when the news broke that the White House had nothing, they looked at it and said, there's nothing here. I I, I did a video and you can see it. And I just said the same thing I'm going to tell you guys right now. Which is, let me tell you what they're going to say. It's not enough wasn't thorough enough, it wasn't deep enough, that the FBI was going to have their hands tied, the scope was too limited, blah, 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 blah. Democrats agreed that the investigation scope should be limited. We did not agree that the White House should tie the FBI's hands. Well, (laughs) limited and tying their hands are the same, right? Because we're going to limit you to this, all you have to say is when you're tying their hands. That's it. Are their hands really tied? No. Was a lot of the legwork done? Yes, because we had hours and hours and hours of testimony from the two people that were involved. This wasn't about finding out how drunk he was. People like upset. Oh, they should have gone deeper and deeper. No, it wasn't about any of that stuff. It, It was about did he potentially do these things to these women And when all was said and done, it was about that. And they apparently found no, 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 they didn't. Nothing that we could find. We didn't learn anything new. And based on what we knew before, we felt very confident. Yeah, we didn't learn anything new. We didn't learn any. And I knew we weren't going to learn anything new. But some people were uncomfortable. They wanted to have a sense of. Let's just do a little bit more. The Collinses, Murkowskis, the Jeff Flakes, they wanted to go a little bit further. So they did, and they didn't learn anything. And now, 
Well, now it's time to to get it on. That's right. Now it is time to get it on. Mr. President, what is the pending business? The nomination of Brett M. Kavanaugh to be an associate justice of the Supreme Court. I send a cloture motion to the desk for the Kavanaugh nomination. The clerk will report. All right. So that means 30 hours. So tomorrow they could potentially have a vote and then they could have a final vote come Saturday and go from there. Right. Who was it? People are upset. People wanted to be involved. There's a report that potential key witnesses weren't actually spoken to. Now, here's the thing. Key witnesses in what? Because the key witnesses of whether or not he drank a little bit too much in high school or this, that, and the other, and didn't know this woman or didn't know that woman in which these cases were, this is what this FBI was was about, that is a different story than whether or not key witnesses were missed altogether. And that they, they weren't going to listen to them. But we had so much information going into this. And as I have to remind everybody, there is no cold case file. There is no crime scene. There is no dusting for fingerprints. There is none of that stuff. So it was going to be, we're going to interview, we're going to interview, we're going to interview, we're going to interview. We're not making a judgment. Here it is. We wrote up a report. You take a look at it. Tell these guys and gals where they can go look at it. And we're done. And now the fight is on. And the fight is, is you know, they're, they're going to do all they possibly can. They can. They're going to fight. Fight tooth and nail. They're going to do everything they possibly can uh, to stop him. Like I said, as would any side. Let's let's remember that any side. If you're sitting on the other side and you're and you're, you're powerless, you feel you have no power. You can't stop something. And the inevitability of what is about to take place that potentially could shift the court for a decade or two, uh, generationally, you're going to do everything you can to do all you can to stop this. Whether or not they did enough, I don't think they did. I don't. And I think what ends up happening is you threw a woman out there who, who, by the way, is going to be on the cover of Time magazine. I was thinking last night, I wonder what she's getting, right? Because she's not coming away with this empty-handed. They're going to just, they're going to, they're going to, you know, again, they're going to just, just kick her to the side. And, but she's going to, I bet she gets, she gets some, some offers from colleges and all kinds of things. So that'll make up for the fact that the Democrats used her, but it's moving forward now and it's going to happen. When the noise fades, when the uncorroborated mud washes away, mm-hmm. What's left is the distinguished nominee who stands before us. Yeah. And here it is. It's going to happen. They're going to vote. And I don't think they can stop it. And the big thing was, could you get the ones who were close? Could you get the ones who were just sitting there? Could you get the ones who were just teeter-tattering? Oh, could you get them? Ah. The likes of Jeff Flake. Thus far, um, we've seen no new credible uh, corroboration. No new credible corroboration. Elizabeth Warren. I am angry. Shocker. On behalf of women who have been told to sit down and shut up one time too many. Okay, I know no, none of you out there, uh, uh, you guys probably didn't understand what she was saying. I, I, I'll translate because, because you know, she's, she's a wind talker. I'm a wind talker, so I, I, speak, I speak Navajo or Pretendaho, uh, whatever it is, whatever, 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 whatever language. She, <laughs> she said that she is mad and angry, okay, at men who say that women should sit down and shut up. Let's have got more from this. Let me see here. I watched that hearing last Thursday. She watched the hearing last Brett Thursday. Brett Kavanaugh is disqualified. And Brett Kavanaugh is disqualified. Okay, now let's go to Spartacus. It's very frustrating that they didn't do a thorough uh, investigation, that they didn't interview all the relevant witnesses, they didn't interview all the potential eyewitnesses, they didn't interview all the cooperating witnesses. I'm, I'm actually shocked. No, you're not. You're not shocked. You're also running for president. 
It is what it is. This was going to happen if they didn't find anything concrete. Remember, the Anita Hill quote-unquote investigation was three days. They did five days of investigating. They talked to nine people. This is why winning the election is important. They didn't win the election. The Republicans did. So in the end, scoreboard. That's it. In the end, scoreboard. You can protest. You could walk. You can wear funny hats. You could scream and yell. You can do all of those things. He cheated. He's horrible. He's this. He's that. It's not fair. But in the end, scoreboard. That's why elections are so vitally important. 323-538-2423 at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You could tweet at us. Chad, that's not very nice. We see scoreboard like that. It's going to hurt somebody's feelings. It may trigger somebody's feelings. It's National Taco Day. So there's a question you guys out there. On to stuff that really matters in the world. Who's your go-to taco? What's your go-to taco? Like, I love I love Del Taco. I love Jim Boys. Uh, you know what? It's interesting. It's like, I, 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 I was never, it's not that I don't like Taco Bell because I do like Taco Bell, but I was always kind of a Del Taco guy. But when I do go to Del, when I do go to Taco Bell, I'm like, oh, this is really good here, but I don't get tacos there. See, I do get soft tacos at, at Del Taco. So it is taco day. So I'm having a taco. I'm probably a quesadilla because I love a quesadilla. Who's your go-to taco? 323 538 At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. A lot of stuff still to get to. It's the Chad Benson Show. You go, boy. This isn't about right or left. This is just about right and wrong. Right you are, Chad. The Chad Benson Show. Man, they were down there in droves. They're still down there. Protesters, the ones who haven't been arrested. Some have been arrested. And it's uh, this is becoming a fight. Look, and it's not a done deal. I still think right now I lean towards he gets in. But, and this is the poll question today, is who's going to say no? That's who's the biggest one. Who's the one that people worry about most? Is it Flake? Is it Collins? Is it Murkowski? Uh, Flake, 37%, uh, Collins, 32 Murkowski, 31 It only takes one to, you know, to, it, I mean, I, I think the two ladies, Collins and Murkowski, are the ones that, that are, I, Jeff Flake is, as far as I'm concerned, he's a done deal. He wanted this. He thought it was thorough. He didn't find anything in there. I don't worry about that. Collins has since gone back in and looked at it. She said it was thorough, but... Murkowski is being very quiet right now. Uh, you know, so you've got you've got this this real uh, it's going to be close, you know, so they're going to take a procedural vote tomorrow. They're going to go around and say, hey, we're going to do whip around. We're going to find out if we got this thing. And if we do, then come Saturday, we're going to go for it. It's not a done deal. It's not. It's going to be very, very close. Very, very close. And uh, Manchin is not saying what he isn't, you know, is or isn't going to do. So you've got a uh, you've got a real issue here with, you know, what may or may not happen as far as because I, I think the Democrats thought today that it was over and dusted. But I still think they're holding out hope that they can flip one Heidi Heidkamp, who's one they thought that the Republicans thought they may be be able to get she said no she's not going to vote for kavanaugh and the reality is is she's in a race that she's not going to win she's 12 points behind the the, the you know she's a senator that is a democrat that they're going to lose and that's why this whole thing about you know how important it is to vote how you need to pay attention to this stuff and you know while a lot of people think they've got a one in three chance the reality is, is that's not like a 50-50 or a 60-40. It's not like the House, the Senate, and this is where it takes place, is the Senate. Even if they lose this round and they win and hold serve come November, we'll be right back here with potentially Kavanaugh again or 
somebody like Amy uh, Coney Barrett, which, man, if I am the Democrats, be careful what you wish for, kids, because that what if may come and bite you in the ass. 323 538 at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Each and every day at this time, we like to break it down for you. We give it to you, so if you do go to a protest, you can, you know, maybe you understand the vernacular and you can throw some of these things out there. We call this our Urban Word of the Day. It's time for the Urban Word of the Day, fam. What? Right now? Time to get a little more hip on the streets. I can't understand a word you're saying. Urban Word of the Day. Are you down to DM? No, that's not some weird sexual phrase, kids. That's down to direct message. DM, direct messaging. It's with the children, the kids, the youths of America. You want a DM? You want a direct message? Did you get the follow? You did? Did you DM her? Did you DM him? Direct message, kids. So put that in your bank. So when you see something and you're like, Mom, I'm just DMing my friend, they're going to be like, whoa. You're like, no, Mom, direct message. You'll get it. You'll understand it down to dm or dm direct messaging your urban word of the day thank you for saying that and dated urban slang so that i'll understand you that there was the urban word of the day we damn stretched your cranium what i've been dealing with since july the 10th the downhill slope that schumer's put us on is really dealing with the demolition derby <laughs> Grassley, man, he was all fired up today. So was Mitch McConnell. Ah, oh, jeez, Chad, why you make fun of me? Huh? Huh? There's no way anything we did would satisfy the Democrats. No. Uh, they've always got a reason why the goalposts need to be moved. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So there you go. You were never going to survive. You were never going to satisfy them, ever. There was nothing about this that was ever going to happen. Three two three five three eight twenty four twenty three at Chad Benson shows your Twitter. What scares you of Kavanaugh? Text me. I'd like to hear from you. Tweet at me. You can DM me if you want to as well. Paul Lamone joins us. Talk a little tax. Some crazy stuff out there. Let's change directions. Chad Benson show. The Chad Benson Show. Independent in thoughts and punk rock in life. It's the Chad Benson Show. With all of this talk of Judge Kavanaugh, will he, won't he, did he, or didn't he, uh, I'm kind of over it. Every once in a while I need a break, and why not on this beautiful National Taco Day slow down a little bit and talk a little tech with our guy Paul Lamone from uh, many different companies, from uh, 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 Double Edge Media and, and everything else that you're doing out there, Wearplay. Uh, Paul joins us now. What's up, man? How you doing? Doing good. Hanging in there. So <laughs> let's talk. Yeah, yeah, you are. Let's talk a little tech. Uh, and this was interesting. And this is something I've always wondered about. And there's a new study out. And it's about humans and aliens relationship, because the whole thought process is that governments keep everything quiet because we wouldn't really know what the, the, the entire general population would do. What would religion do and all of this stuff if they found out there was little green men? What's the study say? So the study was going to refute that. They said that, you know, the, the world would basically go crazy. Riots in the streets. All of civilization would crumble if we found out that there were other alien life and other civilizations. Well, this brand new study says they started easing people in on it. They said, what if we found microbial life? So tiny, my, you know, tiny little like worms and little um, microscopic life. And people are like, cool. There's no like, there's no real problem. And they started graduating up until you had basically the little green men scenario. And still they found that among the American society, people were more curious than afraid which is what they always said. They said the, the population would be so terrified of this idea that, you know, all our social structures would fall apart. Well, this new study seems to refute that and says that, no, our society's become curious now. So if a little green man popped out of a ship on the White House lawn, we would be like, oh, OK, let me hear more. And First so they started all, shooting if, us all. If a little green man came out, Trump would want to build a wall or a shield. 
Other people would say, we need to let them stay. We need to give them social programs. Then, then they would ask him what his choice is and stuff like that. And I used the word choice and him because, goodness me, there's the patriarchy. But I, I think we are <laughs> curious people, and we, we want to know about all of this stuff. I mean, Roswell, I mean, we love conspiracy theories. And the biggest, the biggest conspiracy it. theory of all is that Roswell happened and there are green men in Nevada. And the study was pointing to the fact that all our media saturation has kind of prepared us for this concept in a propaganda sort of way. We see movies like E.T. and all these movies about all these friendly aliens and all this stuff. You know, Star Wars, all the alien, most of the aliens you meet are actually on the side of the good guys. And they said, you know, we've been slowly sh- having the society realize that it wouldn't be a catastrophic event. It could be a an amazing event that would increase our civilization. Yeah, and so I think that that's been, yeah, exactly. It's a, uh, I don't know if you remember the old twilight zone episode where they came here to serve man and the book yes. that they gave humankind was a cookbook to yeah, serve man. Yeah. Men, I another meeting to the aliens. Um, yeah, they're going to eat us. It's happening. I know, you know, we all us. know. Yeah. But hey, let's have fun while we do it. Talking to Paul Lamona, our tech gurus. We talk about all kinds of fun stuff as we change pace for at least a little while. Uh, speaking of political correctness, this is interesting. So AI is going to be out there, and this is something the left should be super excited about, uh, which is uh, uh, the fact that AI is going to be politically correct and polite indeed. Yeah, so, so when you go to post on Twitter... AI in, in the future, it's not ready right now, but they're building it, will we'll suggest alternatives to profanity or something to be derogatory based on what the AI thinks is derogatory. So it's going to be policing our language. And before you can set send, it's going to say, do you really want to say this? Here's alternative ways to say your thoughts. You know what? You know, a lot of times it is what I mean. Like it or not, what I post may be what I mean. And the fact yeah. that they're wanting to police our politeness seems really odd because not you don't always want to be polite. No, no. What if I want to be a Richard? You know, we already have that now. It's like you go yeah. on to things and you try. If you, come on, everybody. We've all tried to type a certain word and it comes out with uh, ducking. <laughs> come on. Let's not, let's not pretend that we haven't. We're like, and it doesn't make sense. And people are like, that's totally stupid. Come on now. We've already got that. I don't want AI telling me I can't tweet something that may be offensive because everything's offensive nowadays. So I might as well at least enjoy it. Everything's exact. Everything's offensive to somebody. And so that becomes the fear on this. Who's training the AI and who's training them to think something's offensive? So w- you're getting another one of those giant tech conglomerates being able to control speech. And that's bad. Whenever, every time that happens, that's a bad thing. That's because you just want bad. people to be able to be a jerk if they want to be a jerk or be nice if they want to be nice. <sighs> You know, it's just that we got enough issues with tech right now in Silicon Valley running the world and, and, and the craziness that, that and trust me, I, I deal with it on a daily basis, basis trying to do stuff. Hey, that whole Facebook hacking thing, like, I don't think a lot of people understood how big that was. Well, one of the reasons they didn't is it's being reported that Facebook was purposely not allowing those stories into its own uh, feed. So stories about Facebook being hacked was being blocked as spam by facebook so that was interesting to me i was like there's an example of when a giant corporation can control a message because this is a message that was bad towards them and their you know their algorithms are saying oh yeah we shouldn't allow that through that's spam well it wasn't spam it happened yeah it's like you're not fooling anybody. Oh, it's the establishment media. It's not real. It's not real. Talking to Paul Lamone, our tech guru. We move from there to this is what I find interesting. We're going to, as we know more and more about the brain, we're going to get to the point where we can really understand it. And eventually, you know, I say we're going to be downloading all kinds of stuff. And you may live forever. It may not be in the body you're in right now. Maybe in, in other bodies or inside of a computer and all of this stuff. But as far as like violent people, Shocking the brain because we've always tried stuff, lobotomies. We've tried shocking stuff. We tried potentially shocking the brain could make you less violent. So a new study where they they've brought a bunch of violent offenders, mostly you know physical violence, that kind of thing, sexual assault type of offenders, and they shocked their brains and they asked them on a scale from one to ten, how likely are you to want to do this again? How likely you want to you know get physically violent? And 
it was really interesting. 47 to 70% of people reduce their want, their want or their desire to express in a violent manner. They were able by this, by shocking the brain, it was giving them the ability, it seems, to readjust their thought process and rechannel the anger in a way that wasn't a violent, aggressive act that would be physically attacking someone. Yeah. So that is a 20 minute treatment. Yeah, well, this is a small study. I also look at it in, in how are we going to do this in, in the future when it comes to things like people with post-traumatic stress disorder or memories where maybe we can block it or shock it out of you as if it doesn't happen. And there's a worry that if you do that, you may change the person that you are today, but is it better doing that than living with the thing that has happened in your life? Well, it's true. And sometimes maybe you want to change the person you are today. Yeah. If you are becoming a super depressed person or a super problematic person, you're not be able to, to really cope with life. They have seen when it comes to depression, potentially 20 plus percent improvement using uh, electric magnet, electromagnetic stimulation of the brain on depression patients. So if it helps with that, and that's something, you know, you don't want to be a depressed person. And we as society don't want violent people running around. So if you're in prison, could this be somehow instituted where prisoners that are violent get this as part of their therapy before they're released from prison. Very it's not invasive. It's not like doing, not unlike doing, you know, lobotomies, not, you know, and it's not, you know, something that would be invasive to a patient. It's like sit here for 20 minutes in this contraption that goes on your head and we will treat you for your violent behavior. I oh, think it's worth weird. a try. Absolutely. You know what? Think outside the box. Talking to Paul Lamone, our tech guru. Uh, and finally, last but least, for all of those of you out there who are super excited about the Fight for 15 uh, people at the fast food restaurants, we saw yesterday that a lot of us are eating fast food on a daily basis, and it's become a way of life here in America. Guess what? The, the burger people who are serving you may be leaving. The touch screens are coming, but there's a bad thing, because what do we do, Paul? We buy more. And that's the death kill for uh, the, the regular human serving us. They realized McDonald's has put all these touch screens in a bunch of their stores. And they're talking about putting at least a thousand touch screens, a uh, thousand stores will be adding touch screens to them every year. Or they're going to try and make it even faster in a year. And the reason why is it's fun. They realize people find it fun. And because it's fun, they order more. So once it hits that big corporation's bottom line, Burger King. Wendy's, everybody's going to say, why don't we put touch screens in here? If people are going to have fries with it and have, you know, the super size their drink and order maybe, you know, a dessert, the touch screen takes the place of everything that you can't really train a person at the counter to do, which is upsell your food items. They try to, but it never really apparently works as much as it does when you're in front of a computer screen. It feels like a game almost. It's a gamification of buying food it's a game and it's a me, game that's, that's what it, it's it, a game. you're sitting there and and i've i've done it you know i'll walk into some of the newer mcdonald's and stuff and i'll look and there's a line for people because people for whatever reason too, i also notice there's also people who are scared to go into those things yeah and it's the same thing when i go to a movie theater and there's a line and then there's two kiosks that are just and like people are still have this fear that that somehow that's not going to give you something to get inside the theater or your food's not going to it's impossible for that to, for me to order there i got to go to this kid <laughs> and, and 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 so you know there's no so judgment i go from the computer too there's, that's the other thing there's so no judgment dude how many big macs are you eating <laughs> <laughs> That's the other thing. It's like, oh my god, I can order three of these. Nobody's as many as I want. Disgusting. Computer, you're not gonna, you're not going to judge me, computer. I mean, as much as I want. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't that be like you go order? I'll take two double uh, quarter pounders, and you're like, really, <laughs> really? You don't get that. Uh, but, really? But I notice when I go into these places or when I go to the movie theaters that people are afraid to use the touch screen, like it's not real. And I just go over and I bing, 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 bing. And it is kind of fun because I can do it myself. And the whole time I'm like, you guys are going to be out of business. You guys are going to be fired, which I don't think is nice either. But I do say that a lot. <laughs> and, but it, it is kind of fun. I have to admit it. They've got these animations that come on screen and your your stuff. And also, it's really easy to customize. Yes. As you can tell, I'm an aficionado of McDonald's ordering as because I've used these systems quite a lot. And I can have like extra onions and or no mayonnaise or whatever, just with a few punches of my finger. And I don't have to worry and check like you do with the drive through. Did they actually hear me? Did they actually get my order right? 
That's right. Because that's, it's going to that ticket that hits into the back of the room. That is so huge and right so there. Far, so, like, if I screw up, right. if I screw up, it's on me. Yes. If I tell you something to screw up, and I got to check all the time because I know that chances are, and this sounds horrible, I'm going to say it for a lot of places around the country. Maybe English isn't the first language, and there's a there's a there's a barrier and a gap there, and it's tough. And oh goodness me, you can just go boop boop boop. Plus, you can customize, and a lot of times there's things that you want, and then you go up there, and you like if you're telling somebody. You're just like, okay, this is how I really want it, but I'll take this. If you get half of this right, I'm good. You know that you can get the whole thing right, and it's easy. Uh, and it's a game. Yeah, I want a cheeseburger, and, and I'm putting two, and I want two cookies on it. What do you think of that? Yep. <laughs> and Paul you know Lamonis, if, what? Go ahead. Go ahead. No, no I was going to say, <laughs> if, 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 I get if excited this when we start talking this, about food, you know, I just keep talking. <laughs> if this pans out, and I think it's going to uh, sooner rather than later, how close are we to having real? Like, we're going to eliminate humans inside of fast food minus a few. Super close. There's a, 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 res- a robot restaurant opened in Pasadena to try out a robot cook. And they just announced today, which is kind of a side but interesting, they've got a robot that can lay drywall. So it's coming. So the, the, if a, ro- a robot can lay drywall in, in construction, he can definitely give you a Big Mac. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. It's coming. Paul it's coming. Genius. You're a genius, sir. I love having you on talking about food. This is just like Anthony Bourdain, but in a much more cheaper way. Thank you so much. <laughs> All right, talk to you later, brother. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. C-H-A-D-P-E-N-S-O-N. That's me. You check us out. It is funny, though, when I go to places and I notice I'll look, and I don't know if you do this, Phil, like you ever go to the movie theaters. Well, you don't really go in those movie theaters that have kiosks because there's only like one theater playing. But you go to those big ones, those kiosks are always empty and people are waiting in line for an hour yeah, and i'm like I why that. i don't get it i don't like what are you afraid of and somebody just texts in and said well if it's if they took cash i okay for some people i get that but for most of us it's it's just it's it's quick and it's simple and it, people are still terrified of technology and i don't get it three two three five three eight twenty four twenty three at chad benson show is your twitter some of those people are gonna be looking for a job and you may be looking for them ZipRecruiter can help you. ZipRecruiter.com slash Benson. This is where you're going to post your job for free, and I'll tell you how you do that in a second. So you got a job, and you're looking, and you really need to hire somebody because you want to expand your business. ZipRecruiter is how you do it. First thing you do is when you sign up with them, and again, I'm going to tell you how it's going to be free for you. ZipRecruiter.com slash Benson. What happens is your job goes to 100 of the web's leading job boards. So out it goes. Then they start to scan thousands and thousands and thousands of resumes. They find the ones that match up with the job that you're looking for, invite them to apply. They apply, and then they're going to scan the best of the best of the best, and then, voila, away you go. In fact, within 24 hours, 80% of people who post a job get a quality candidate right there. Highest rating hiring site in America Zip Recruiter is. Post your job for free. I said free. This is what I need you to do. ZipRecruiter.com slash Benson. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash B-E-N-S-O-N. ZipRecruiter.com slash Benson. Post your job for free today. ZipRecruiter, the smartest way to hire. It's the Chad Benson Show. Warning. No snowflake zone. Uninformed opinions are in danger of melting. The Chad Benson Show. (laughs) That right there is the sound of what was supposed to be the end of a peewee football game in the ceremonial handshake that turned out to be the nightmare of dad's fighting. And I... uh, you know, I, I went to, I, a couple weeks ago. So, for those of you guys not, Jack, my son, who just lives for football, he's eight years old. His dream is to be a New England Patriot. Uh, he got a, he suffered a bad concussion, not playing football, by the way, PE at school, playing basketball. So, he couldn't play. So, we went to his football game, though, to watch his team because he supports his team. And we're watching the game. And there's like, it's, it's, it's NFL flag, and it's really well done. So, as I'm watching the game, there's like four games going on and to watch some of the parents and to watch some of the coaches and it's, it's cringeworthy, the screaming, the yelling, those things. I, I find it cringeworthy because this is fun. You're supposed to be learning at their age. 
five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You teach them stuff. When it, I understand, as as you get older, you can get a little bit harder on. But some of the parents and some of the way that they act towards the referees, the way that they act towards the, the their own kids and other kids, the way that they scream at them, and I, it is it is a tough thing. And to watch these these guys, they haven't filed any charges, and they were going at it, and and it is it's it is crazy. You know, it's funny too when you watch it. You just realize how the difference between boxers and you and, and and MMA fighters, and watching just people who have no fighting skills whatsoever, the haymakers they throw, the they just you're sitting there going, my God, like some of them swing and they fall over because they're so out of shape. It's hilarious. Three two three five three eight twenty four twenty three at Chad Benson show. The uh, I guess the police said the reason they're not going to file. They said the social media embarrassment of what took place is probably enough punishment for everybody. At Chad Benson show is your Twitter. Check out Chad Benson show TV on the YouTube and at Chad Benson show on Instagram and wherever social media is. We'll be there, kids, because that's what we do. We're here to keep you informed. All right, Chad Benson show. This is the Chad Benson Show. Independent in thoughts and punk rock in life. It's the Chad Benson Show. Survivors, not drunken liars. Believe. Survivors, not drunken liars. Believe. Survivors, not drunken liars. Oh. It's only heating up, guys. It's only heating. They're going to be busting them in from all over. And this is going to be very interesting to see what happens with this whole Kavanaugh. They're going to take a whip around tomorrow. Whip around. We're going to figure out exactly if we got enough votes for this or we don't got enough votes for this. Now, Jeff Flake, everybody's worried about him. And our poll question of the day is, you got Flake, you got Murkowski, and you have Collins. Right? Hyde Camp's out. That's one of the Dems they thought they can get her. She's getting her ass handed to her. She's got no chance of winning her thing. So it is what it is. She's out. And then on the other side, you've got Manchin, who's still undecided. So Flake was the one who said, hey, before we go through with this, Mitch McConnell and Chuck Grassley, I would like a week to look into it and have the FBI and Collins and Murkowski were really on board with this and you need them. And now after this, he seems to be satisfied. I was a yes before this. I was looking for, I wanted this pause. Uh, We've had this pause. We've had the professionals, the FBI determined given the scope that we gave them current credible allegations uh, to go and do their review, which they've done. So, what's going to happen? I mean, tomorrow they're going to sit down and they're going to zip around and they're going to ask people, and they're essentially, the, the, it, it's a practice vote, if you will. That's the best way. I'm going to break it down. Keep it simple, stupid. It's a practice vote. Procedure vote. We're going to take a practice vote, make sure we're going to look, make sure, and then we're going to have a real vote come Saturday. And that's if they have enough. That's if they have enough. Let's just remember, this whole thing is, I don't even, we're at a place now where you weren't going to please any of of the people on the left. It didn't matter what took place. It didn't matter, no matter what you did, you weren't going to make anybody happy. Because there wasn't anything in there that said he was evil and bad, and that's what they wanted. Right? Right? Schumer can come out all day and talk, 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 talk all they want. They could come out and say the things. But the reality was you weren't going to make any of them happy. And we're in that position now where let's just figure it out. I think that's the best way that we can go about doing these things. McConnell spoke today in his usual. Well, just just his he's just a good time, isn't he? How did we get from a chorus of expert praise and professional respect to wild tales of violent gangs, 
sexual assault rings, fistfights on boats in Rhode Island harbors, and the possibility, get this, of an argument in a college bar? <laughs> I mean, if, if, even if you're against Kavanaugh, when you listen to it framed in a certain way, it does seem ridiculous, right? Like, it just seems ridiculous. But you were never going to, and I said it last night, uh, and, and, and follow me along on all of my social medias. I do a lot of videos at night and, and throughout the day. Uh, and, and I said that it was never going to be enough. It was never going to be, no matter what you did, no matter what you did for the left, it was never, ever, ever, ever going to be enough. And now it's time to find out if they have enough. People are asking me, what do you, I feel right now it is tipping a little bit to Kavanaugh's side, but a lot's going to happen. And you've got people who are putting pressure on the likes of, of you know, Murkowski and Collins. And every person that's here has thousands of people behind them who have stories and have reasons to convince our senator why this isn't the right decision and that and she's listening so and my thing is okay so what are the thousand stories behind you what are the thousand stories behind you where are the stories that's what I want to know. I want to. What is behind you? That's that thousand stories you talk about. How did we get to this point that you've got a thousand stories behind you? I want to know what those thousand stories are. What exactly is it, it, you've got? You speak for everybody because that's when you hear a lot of stuff like that. You're like, okay, wait, hold on a second. Uh, you speak for for everyone. I mean, really? I'm here to tell my senator that this is a bad decision for the country. And it doesn't reflect the values of our state, uh, which represents and upholds women's rights, native rights, um, reproductive rights. You speak for everybody? I mean, you do you speak for everyone? Do you speak for everybody? Look, if you talk to a lot of conservatives who understand the courts who get this... Kavanaugh was not their first pick. And I tell people this all the time. What if? Let's say he doesn't get it, right? Let's say that Collins and Murkowski say I'm out and they can't get Manchin to flip and that's that and it's over and it's done with. And then lo and behold, six weeks later, they maybe pick up a seat or two, hold serve in the Senate, which means they'll have another chance to appoint somebody where they'll get him through. And then lo and behold, here comes Amy Coney Barrett. And she makes, I mean, I read an article yesterday that said (laughs) she makes Kavanaugh look like a progressive. Then what? Because you've laid it all out now. And if another hit job comes and it's on a woman, oh, yeah, you're going to have some issues, right? And we're going to be back in the same situation. It's going to be interesting. Now, for all of the negativity... Right, because that's all you see all day. It's just negative, 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 and the fighting's going on, and there's people being dragged out. Oh my God, it's ah, uh, and all this stuff. For all of that stuff, there are people out there that support Kavanaugh. There are people out there that you know what they they like Kavanaugh. They they don't want to get rid of him. They want to hear what he has to say. They and it's not just because I think a lot of it people think it's just all men. Like it's all that like is men. Nobody else likes Kavanaugh. Nobody else likes Kavanaugh at all. No, that's not true. There's plenty out there that like Kavanaugh that are women. But men, I think a lot of them are quietly getting behind Kavanaugh because they feel like they've been damned and that all men are now serial rapists, alcoholics, abusers. It's been set up as an us versus them, but there are women out there that are getting behind Kavanaugh. Could you tell me just in a word, which one of the two do you believe? Kavanaugh. 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 Judge Kavanaugh, without a doubt. One word to describe Dr. Ford. A liar. I think that something happened, but I think she's got the wrong person. She could remember precisely having one beer 
She could remember a door being locked, but she couldn't remember how she got there, how she got home. That's very selective. If I was a victim, like she says she was, you think I'm going to go to my politician? I'm going to go to authority. <laughs> I almost feel like the person is right. I'm going to authority. You better watch out, guys, because I'm coming. But there's going to be a lot of people there that are protesting. There's going to be a lot of people, a lot of women. And I'm asking the question, and I want to hear from you. I want, a, I want a real thing. What are you afraid of? What is your biggest fear? What do you think is going to happen? You know, Bernie Sanders is the climate's going to completely change. We're all going to sink into the ocean, just like Al Gore promised us uh, that everybody's going to lose all their rights, that only white men will have anything. I mean, I've heard all kinds of but what what is it? You know, the the ACLU and the New York Times did a big op ed piece and somebody sent it to me earlier and you read it and you're like, OK, so he sided with voter ID and says it's not racist. I know a lot of people out there. Uh, let me tell you when my let me tell you when voter ID changed for me. When I have to show you my ID to get a cough syrup, right? And to get allergy medicine, but you don't have to show your ID to vote. Well, it disproportionately hurts minorities. Does it? How? How? Well, then they can't get down to vote because they can't get down to get an ID. How, why can't they get down to get an ID? There's ways around this, but it, there's always an excuse for something. That's one of the things that they said. And he sided with a with a, a white farmer in, a, in an affirmative action, you know, case. And and is a so the, these are some of the things they throw. And I'm asking, okay, where's the real fear? What's the real fear? And for women, and you saw it today. You didn't see affirmative action there today. You didn't see any of that. You know what you saw today? You saw women, because women. The big thing is this became men versus women. This became choice. That's what this is about. Choice. Choice, choice, choice. The generational shift will be, Roe v. Wade will be overturned. He's already said, look, it's it's spoken for. Now, nationally, federally, they may keep it. States may come and say, hey, we want to have our own states' rights. That's what we're allowed to have. And we choose to do this. It'll be challenged in courts, and it's going to go there. And there's some 20, 23 states that may challenge it. Absolutely. It may make it harder. Not that you can't get one. You just may not be able to get one in this state. Right? You go to California, there's lots of things you can't get in California. There's lots of guns you no longer can have in California. So what? So you got to go somewhere else if you want to get it, and you can't bring it back to California. Little, th- I mean, the state's right. It may become a state's rights issue. But that's the thing that this was about today. It was. And it's become men versus women. And I'm telling you guys, that's not a good way. That's not a recipe for success. It's not. It's not a recipe for success. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You can tweet at us. It's not. I just don't. I And, and I want to hear from you. What, what's your biggest fear? What do you think is going to happen? What is your biggest fear? Because how many times in life do we worry about something and we over worry it? And then people start stoking the fires, which is what politicians do because they want to make it an us versus them. Uh, my, my viewpoint is right. Your vote, your, your viewpoint isn't even wrong. It's just evil. That's what you are. You're evil. And that's what happens. And then they build it up. Cause I heard a lot of gods and guns are taken away from us when Obama was president and that hasn't happened. And it didn't happen. I don't know if he's coming back and swooping in. He's being stealthy. I don't know. But we build these things up. And then they don't happen. It's like when you're a kid, you think something's going to happen because you did something at school. And you get home and you find out, oh, do you remember the movie Christmas Story? Remember that? Remember Ralphie was worried because he got in a fight and broke his, you know, he got into a fight and, he, and, and it was horrible. And he, and, and, and he broke his glasses and he beat the kid up and all this stuff. And he was worried because he was saying all these bad words and his dad was going to come home and he built it up that he was going to, all this horrible things happen. And then they told his dad nothing happened. It was all worried for nothing. I think a lot of that's what, what happens. We build something up to be so much bigger than it really is. And then when it happens, you're like, uh, oh. if it ever happens, which is a lot of times rarely. Three two three five three eight twenty four twenty three at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Speaking of politics, politics is crazy. Who's advocating on your behalf? Just curious. Who's advocating on your behalf? You've got your viewpoints. You don't feel it's being met. You got somebody like ARP out there. If they're not doing it, you're over fifty. Who's doing it? How about AMAC? Association of Mature American Citizens. Let me tell you something, kids. They're giving you a year membership free. 
They're amazing. 40% off movie tickets. The one that people ask me all the time, is it really 40% off like theme parks like Disney World, Disneyland, SeaWorld, Legoland? Yes, 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 yes. Retail, restaurant, hotel discounts, so many of them. You don't even have to give me your credit card. It's a year membership. You sign up for free today. All they want you to do is just go sign up. amac.us forward slash Chad. That is amac.us forward slash Chad. It's a year free, no trick, no credit card required, nothing like that. Sign up for free, amac.us forward slash Chad, or call 888-355-1668, 888-355-1668, or online at amac.us forward slash Chad. Nobel Peace Prize, what? It's the Chad Benson Show. separation anxiety that's dumb check out chad 24 7 at his website chadbensonshow.com and on itunes free the chad benson show never feel lonely again so john kyle who's one of the senators he took over for john mccain after his passing uh, and he'll fill his seat until uh it runs out has said that there's no sexual there's no evidence of any sexual impropriety anything like that uh, when it comes to uh, good dude, by the way, good dude, uh, when it comes to Kavanaugh. So, again, it's going to be very close and very interesting to see what takes place over the next couple of days. And people are tweeting in and they're texting me. I'm afraid of this. I'm afraid of that. Choice is a big thing. You know, uh, people are worried that he's going to again. He's uh, because they're told all of these things, you know, and they and they cherry pick. Things they go. Oh, look at this this case here. He, I know he sat on a thousand cases, but I here's four that are going to ruin your life, and it's it's hard to compete with that because people have it in their mind. They're only seeing the worst of the worst of the worst. So we'll see what takes place. It's it, it's going to be very interesting. So the Nobel Peace Prize. the The odds are out. Are you ready for this? The the three leaders, if you will, are Moon of South Korea, Kim Jong Un of North Korea, and Trump. Yeah, Trump. I said if he was able to pull off peace and have a, a let's be since the, the the fighting and the screaming and the yelling and all of the stuff. It's been a lot quieter, right? We're not worried about the insanity of what was. They seem to be moving in a direction. He can be a little bombastic at times, the uh, the little guy over there. But uh, uh, for all intents and purposes, it's interesting. Could it happen? Possibly. Dare I say, probably even more deserved than Obama's one, which he got for doing. He doesn't even know what he got it for. So it'll be very. I, what would the left do? I would pay just to see that. In fact, dare I say this, I would give up Kavanaugh to see him win the Nobel Peace Prize. I think that would be a great swap. Because <laughs> they're going to win the Senate probably, and they'll have a chance to put somebody else there. Three two three five three eight twenty four twenty three at Chad Benson. Show us your Twitter. You can tweet at us. Speaking of somebody who knows Trump, Michael Caputo is going to join us. He was uh, an advisor in Trump's campaign. Uh, he's gone through the ringer. When it comes to uh, the Russia investigation and all kinds of stuff, he's got uh, he thinks this is a dress rehearsal for what could be impeachment. I don't know if I agree with that, but it'll be interesting to get his take on Kavanaugh and all of the things that are happening there in D.C. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter, C-H-A-D-B-E-N-S-O-N. It's the Chad Benson Show. Chad Benson Show. Independent in thoughts and punk rock in life. It's the Chad Benson Show. Everybody's angry. I got it. It's it's. It's nuts. It really is. I'm watching people march and people are throwing fits and everybody thinks the world's coming to an end. I feel okay. 
I don't know about you guys. Joining us now is uh, Michael Caputo, former Trump campaign advisor. Uh, and you are angry, but you don't take yourself too seriously. And there's a reason that you're angry. Well, there is. And thanks a lot for inviting me on, by the way. My, this, uh, the Democrats of today are, are, are so bent on personal destruction. And in a small way, in a minor way, my family's been in their crosshairs. This bogus Russia investigation has cost my family more than I make. And it's destroyed my business. It's really ripped us apart. But, you know, we'll recover. I can't believe what they've done to Brett Kavanaugh, though. I mean, him and his family, I've never seen anything like it. you got to admit, it's more than we've ever seen before. Oh, it's, it's, it's nasty. And, and then I'm watching all these people march on the street, Michael, and I'm just like, I don't, I don't have the energy for that, Michael. I don't have the energy to get out and be so pissed off at the world that I need to take, you know, and, and go down and, and burn an effigy. And, and I was listening to something today, and I think Charles Krautheimer said it, that, you know, the right side of the aisle says you're wrong. The left side of the aisle says you're evil. And that's the issue. I, these, everybody out there is so ginned up, and they think the other side is evil, this tribalism. And we're watching it unfold right now, and I'm just like, God, I just don't have the the energy for that. Well, it's the same thing. I appear a lot on CNN and Fox and MSNBC, and you know, uh, a lot of the folks I talk to on, uh, on you know on these shows, they really believe that that they're right and you're wrong. And I, I look at it this way: uh, just because I disagree with you doesn't mean you're wrong. In fact. I've, you know, changed my mind many times sitting on a panel listening to people who are across from me who oppose my point of view uh, just because they made some sense. I mean, I went back and forth on Twitter today with Matthew Dowd, who's a uh, 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 talking head on, on CNN, and he says uh, in a tweet today that, he's, uh, that the media does an incredible disservice when they seek balance instead of the truth, having guests on just to get balance but who take us further from the truth hurts our world. And that's really strange to me, because if you disagree, if I disagree with you, that doesn't mean you're wrong. Sometimes you're right. And that becomes clear in discussion. And they don't even want to discuss it anymore. They want to scream at United States senators and chase them down the hall and hold the door open on a Senate elevator illegally and rant at them for the cameras and when Kavanaugh is confirmed this weekend, they're going to go nuts. And everybody who's listening to your show needs to know that this is a dress rehearsal for the impeachment of the president of the United States. You know, it's funny. And talking to Michael Caputo, former Trump advisor, <laughs> it's just campaign advisor. They are going to go nuts, Michael. And my whole thing is I keep asking everybody. What do you think happens? Like, do you think on, on, on like Sunday morning? So let's say he gets it, you know, by Saturday, it's a done deal. He's voted. Next thing you know, he's sworn in. Do you think Sunday morning that everybody's rights are taken away, that climate change is officially, you know, it, it, that's it, that it's going to happen? The world's going to come into an end. We're gonna, I, mean, I, I don't know what they think is going to happen, but they're so ginned up and they're so angry. And a lot of times, if you ask a hundred of them, what are you angry about? They're going to give you a hundred different answers. They're just angry. But, you know, it's all fake. It's oh, fake. Yeah. I know they care about who uh, uh, sits on the Supreme Court. We all do. But this is about trying to drive their voters out for the midterm election so they can take control of the House of Representatives and the, you know, the brain trust at the Democratic National Committee and all the wizards in the, in the Democrat caucus in the United States Senate. They really blew it. They totally blew it. Because, you know, those, I live out in flyover country. I'm out in western New York. Where there's more cows than people in my congressional district here. And, you know, our congressional district is kind of a toss-up now between Republicans and Democrats. And it's changing. I mean, look at the national public radio poll today the, done by Marist uh, uh, polling. And it shows that the Democrats had something like a 10 to 14 percent uh, advantage in the, uh, in the in the generic ballot poll in the House districts uh, about four or five weeks ago, and after this Kavanaugh thing, it's evaporated. They've totally overplayed their hands. Men and women in these target congressional districts have had it, and we were worried. You know, let's face it: if the deplorables who support President Trump didn't turn out, we were going to lose the House. They're coming out now, and they're coming out in droves because of Kavanaugh.
Well, yeah, it is. It is. It, it is really is. It's insane, and they and they have only themselves to blame for this. They, but look, I always said it, and we're talking to Michael Caputo, a former Trump campaign advisor. And I've always said that that when when I watch this entire thing break down and the anger that they have, at some point in time, you were going to trigger the other side, and the Democrats were going to were going to were, they were going to die on one hill, if you will. Uh, when it came to, you know, Anton Scalia, they said Gorsuch will give you that one. But this one was the one that they were going to lay down for. And this is where they laid it out. And they've done that. And like you said, a lot of people think, well, this could be a dress rehearsal for impeachment. I hear the Maxine Waters and I, I whatever she says. I mean, I'm, I might as well talk to my straw. I'll get a better answer from that. But I, I hear her, right, and she's out there doing her things, and some people are screaming it. But I think the powers that be who understand the Schumers of the world, this, that, and the other, they don't really want that because they understand that they take the temperature of the room. They know that America doesn't want that. They'd rather see you win in 2020 than try to do this and then blow everything up. All right, wait, I'm still trying to recover from the fact that I hear that you have a straw. You know those are illegal now. You know, yeah, the, mine's the plastic, coming though. to your studio right now. You're not allowed to have straws anymore. You that's know, okay. I, it's actually made of it's made of polar bear bone. That's oh, good God! <laughs> you know, I'll tell you. Last night, I I, I was on CNN. Uh, Anderson Cooper. I I get invited in as the sacrificial uh, Trump supporter uh, three or four times a week in prime time, and I don't mind doing it for the president. So I go on in there, and and they're asking me now. You know, uh, you know how you know they're talking about how much Brett Kavanaugh drinks and how much did he drink and. You know, uh, the, some letter came out that they they read right before they uh, asked me a question uh, from the you know the National Association of Law Professors saying you know that that Brett Kavanaugh shouldn't be confirmed. And I said, look, you know, I'm really tired of this. I'm I'm really tired. First of all, we're all sitting here talking every night for three weeks about what another Yaley says, and I'm I'm tired about talk you know talking about Yaleys who couldn't get into a state university, you know? And, and frankly, next we're going to be talking about, you know, the, 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 uh, the Ivy League Association of Janitorial Professionals don't think that we should be in, uh, uh, confirming Kavanaugh. We've really jumped the shark, Chad, just completely jumped the shark. And it's really important for uh, your listeners to know that if they don't get out, and vote for the Republican incumbent House members. This is absolutely a dress rehearsal for impeachment. And if the if the House goes blue, the president will be impeached for jaywalking in the first quarter of 2019. Oh my God, that'd be interesting to watch. First of all, just Trump in himself, because I, if I know Trump, right? Like I think Trump would want to turn into a prime time special. Let's get this done, and he'll take him on, and it'll be it'll be great. Maybe we can get Alex Trebek, who's apologizing for his thing the other day in the Pennsylvania governor's debate. I don't even know why anybody would bring him in to do that, but it, it would be very interesting to see the way this thing works. I think that this, though, this whole Kavanaugh thing has really set it up and has energized the, the Republicans, uh, but will they get out there? You know, every between now and November, you know this more than anybody, Michael, that is forever in politics, and God knows by Tuesday... Trump will have said something, something will have happened, and Kavanaugh will be in the back burner, and by Friday he'll be a forgotten man until we hear about him again when the next session comes in after this session. So it is still an eternity until the election. It is, but let's, 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 let's walk it back, reverse engineer this. If you're running a congressional race, and you know I, I've run many of them, uh, you're doing a series of 6 to 10 to 15 pieces of mail. That mail starts next week. Right. If you're doing TV commercials, if you haven't defined yourself and defined your opponent by now, you're already out of the race. But your commercials to get out the vote and move people begin next week. Right. And if he's confirmed on Saturday, the protesters and screamers and wild Antifa types, they'll be in motion burning down bank machines uh, into Wednesday of next week. By then, uh, they'll run out of the paid uh, the, the money they get paid by George Soros. You know, maybe mommy calls them back to clean their basement rooms out. And, uh, and so it'll dissipate by Wednesday, Thursday. Then we only got 25 days, 23 days. That's still a lifetime. But then the mail comes and the TV comes and the radio comes and the phone banks come. We might not be peaking too early. I don't Oops. know that for a fact, but you're right. We probably could have drawn this out. Uh, with the help of Diane Feinstein for another 10 days, and then maybe the Democratic Party would be ground into non-existence.
Yeah, yeah. What do you think is going to happen? I mean, you know what? There's no way that that her office didn't leak this information. And and I I've got nothing against Doctor Blasey Ford. I think something happened to her is traumatic. Whether or not it was him, we'll never know because you and I and nobody else were in that room or whatever took place that night. But the whole thought process of how her name got out there and how this I feel bad for her because I feel like the Democrats threw her out there and I don't think she was prepared for it. And and it became uh you know they're just like by any means necessary. And to me, I find that to be really just an awful thing to do yeah i i've been thinking that way too i i believe something probably happened to to uh christine ford i but i gotta tell you you look at when she took her her uh uh her uh polygraph right you understand that at the time she was visiting her friend who was an fbi agent right an fbi agent who she helped coax according to her boyfriend who wrote uh into the uh united states senate under a penalty of perjury uh, that she coaxed she she trained as a psychologist to try to beat a polygraph when she joined the FBI these things were happening remember Brett Kavanaugh was being interviewed uh, in, in in private in a classified sex session by Democrats by by uh, Diane Feinstein about personal accusations on the same time at the same time practically the same moment that Diane Feinstein staffers were introducing Christine Ford to lawyers that are activists in the Democratic Party. So, yeah, I believe that she was outed by Dianne Feinstein. I believe a staffer in Dianne Feinstein's office probably uh, 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 leaked that uh, letter. Uh, but uh, is she really uh, completely uh, clean hands in how this came out and when it came out? I don't know. And no. one of the things, we hear that Chris, Christine Ford wasn't interviewed and uh, Judge Kavanaugh wasn't interviewed by the FBI. I got to tell you, I think if I'm Christine Ford, I'm kind of glad I didn't have to talk to the FBI under oath. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, Michael Caputo, uh, former uh, campaign uh, uh, advisor to uh, President Trump. Uh, last question. It is uh, National Taco Day. Everybody been asking this, and, and I get it from you, man, because you know what? You're a fun-loving, good guy, an all-American, having fun guy. What's your go-to taco? Uh, Lloyd's Taco. It's a truck here in uh, in uh, Western New York, out in the Buffalo area. And I'll tell you, it's not even a taco. They're loaded nachos. They'll blow your mind. So out, oh. outside right now, I'm having a late lunch. Lloyd's Taco truck is parked about four blocks away. I'm having loaded nachos because it's Taco Day. That means it's also Nacho Day. Right on, my man. You can't go wrong there. Appreciate you, Michael, coming on. I look forward to talking to you again. This was fun. Hey, anytime. Take care now. Take care. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter, C-H-A-D-B-E-N-S-O-N. God, we just all need to relax. We just don't we all need to relax? I think so. I need to relax. I'm going to relax this weekend, hopefully. Jack's okay. See, that to me matters. Those things. Tacos, nachos, my kid. You know, you know how it goes, right? The kids, right? You know, my little brother, all these things. They, they, those things matter in life. A lot of this other stuff is crazy. I don't know how people do it. I really don't. I just, I look at all these people and I've just said to myself, I'm trying to remember at what point in time did an outside thing happen so much that I was so angry that I needed to take to the streets. And I cannot remember that time because I don't think it's happened. 323-538-2423 at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Chad Benson Show. Running with scissors sounds great compared to this. Say woo! Say what? Now, Phil, I'm debating something. The big fight is this week, and I'll be with Jack. And he and I have watched a few of those. I don't know, man. I'm thinking about, like, because the hotel that we're going to be staying at, and, again, this is all dependent upon his, on his dome and how his, uh, and his cranium and everything and how he feels. But I was like, you know, I was talking to him last night. He's like, Dad, that's going to be Conor McGregor's fight. And I'm like, ah, I don't know. <laughs> Are you going to watch it? Because I'm thinking about watching it. Um, I'm probably not going to watch it. Uh, it is It is interesting. Conor, sh- this is one of those things where he's like been it's totally quiet. Like the whole time. Maybe this is, this is what I think America should do. Because America is so angry right now. The Republicans get a pick. Khabib or Connor, 
right? So we'll flip a coin, and whoever wins that gets the first choice, Connor or Khabib. And then the second, you know, so let's just say the Republicans say we want Connor McGregor. So you get Connor McGregor, and the Democrats get Khabib. And whatever happens in the fight is how it goes. If Connor would win and the Republicans have him, then Kavanaugh is is there. And if not, then it's he's out. <laughs> See, the way I solve things? See, what we get is we get our aggression out, right? So they're not just fighting for money. They're fighting for, and neither of them are American, so it's perfect, right? So the country is will be turning its eyes on them saying, come on, please, please. That's what I think it's going to sound like when I'm screaming. Please. I don't know if that's going to happen or not. That would be fun, though. That would be. It's going to be interesting because this is supposed to be the biggest one ever. Two million buys is what they're saying. I don't know if it's going to trend there. It'll be very interesting to watch what happens, but I might watch it. I might watch it. 323-538-2423 at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You could tweet at us. A lot of people, I was just watching Orrin Hatch. He was confronted by some protesters, and he told them to grow up. And then they, then they, then they do what people do who are younger. How dare you talk to me that way? Excuse me? How dare you talk to me that way? So you're only allowed to talk? This is the beauty of the free speech thing, kids. He said grow up. You're offended. You need a trigger warning, I'm sure. And then you have the audacity to come back at him and say, how dare you talk to who? You? Ugh, it's crazy. Can we just stop being angry? Is that possible? 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter uh, I want to hear from you, and I'm hearing a lot of you guys are worried about Kavanaugh. You think he's he's going to destroy the court. He's going to make it not compassionate. He's going to do all of these things. I want to hear throughout the night what it is that you're worried about. Car Shield, don't worry about your car. Car Shield's got you covered. They make the entire process of fixing your car for cover pair absolutely easy. You get to choose your favorite mechanic. You can take it to the dealership. You get 24-7 roadside assistance and a rental car for free. Say your car breaks down, you call them. They get it to the shop you want. Next thing you know, it's a $2,500 fix. Something's gone wrong. Maybe your entire engine's out. Car Shield gets them paid directly. They get it handled for you. That's what uh, is so amazing about Car Shield. So I want you to do this. Go online to carshield.com. Check out everything they've got. They've got a plan for you. It's amazing what they have. Right? They've got all, even motorcycles. They got a plan for everything. It's a great way to protect yourself. You can call them at 800 Car 6100. You mentioned code Benson or go to carshield.com. Carshield.com. Use my code Benson when you do either of those. It's going to save you 10% right there. 800 Car 6100 or carshield.com. Code Benson saves you 10%. A deductible may apply. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. C H A D B E N S O N. Chad Benson Show TV on the old YouTube and Instagram as well. It is the Chad Benson Show. This is the Chad Benson Show. Independent in thoughts and punk rock in life. It's the Chad Benson Show. What critics want is a never-ending fishing expedition into high school drinking. That's not what the senators requested. That's not where uh, this investigation's scope went. Uh, It went to serious allegations, and it tried to uh, corroborate them with uh, a set of interviews. Yeah, well, that was never going to happen. That's what they did want. They wanted it to last forever. They wanted it to last forever. And no matter what took place, right, no matter how long it went, no matter how, I mean, it could have gone on for weeks and years and years and years and years, and it still wouldn't be. Diane Feinstein could have died. Chuck Schumer could have died. Brett Kavanaugh could have died. And it still wouldn't have been enough. They could have come back with, hey, we found all kinds of horrible things. It was like, still not long enough. The playbook was so easy to see. It's right in front of you. You knew exactly what it was going to be. We all knew what we were going to find. We're going to find out nothing. We were going to find out nothing. Guess what we found out? 
didn't learn anything new. And based on what we knew before, we felt very confident. We found out nothing. Does it mean that they're not going to stand up? And look, could you be honest with yourself for a second? One second. If you're on the left, right, this is your job. Your job is to stop them from doing this. This is your job. I don't fault them for that. Maybe the way they handled it and destroying somebody potentially in their life and their reputation, that will always, that cloud is always going to be there, right? You know, it's going to be always like Eeyore. It's going to always be falling around that. But that's their job. Chuck Schumer's job. Dianne Feinstein's job. Their job is to stop this from happening. That's their job. We had many fears that this was a very limited process that would constrain the FBI from getting all the facts. Having received a thorough briefing on the documents, those fears have been realized. Realized. That right there and those lovely dulcet set tones are Chuck Schumer. That's their job. And it's a job that was... It's like being the, the Washington Generals, right? You're playing against the Globetrotters. You, you weren't going to win. You're not going to win. They weren't going to find out anything. There wasn't going to be anything that they were going to find out that was going to be epic and, and this changes everything. It wasn't going to happen. Well, they didn't interview everybody. It's the FBI. Look what the White House did. Democrats agreed that the investigation scope should be limited. We did not agree that the White House should tie the FBI's hands. Yeah. Well, of course they're going to, because when you limit it, their hands are tied right there. Russia investigation, what happens? There's no limit. It is limitless. They can do whatever they want. They can interview whoever they want. They can go after everybody and anybody, period, case closed. They can do all they want. This was not one of those things. This was like, hey, you can interview these people. Nine people were interviewed. Why wasn't uh, Kavanaugh and Dr. Blasey Ford interviewed? Simple. They've already been under oath for several hours. They've been talked to, investigated. He's been investigated by the FBI on several occasions. If you were really that concerned about it, you were sitting across from him. You had this letter, Diane Feinstein. You could have asked a question. You could have push the question you could have done that but you didn't but you didn't so it was never going to be anything other than what it was it was the delay in most likely the inevitability jeff flake came out thus far um, we've seen no incredible uh, corroboration no new credible corroboration meaning there's nothing in there What we've heard is a he said, she said, and that's all we were ever going to get. He said, she said, then she said, then he said, then another person came and said, but that kind of fell apart. Then there was another one, and that one turned out to be cuckoo. So now we're in this situation where we've talked to nine people. Well, we need to talk to more. There's other people out there that need to have their opportunity. Why, why, why haven't this person and that person, oh my goodness. Two people who weren't interviewed, Judge Kavanaugh himself or Dr. Christine Blasey Ford. Feinstein says that raises serious concerns, declaring it's not a credible investigation without them. But the White House says they had their chance. Yes, that's it. They had their chance. Your chance was right there. You had it. What do you think was going to happen? Some gumshoe was going to walk in. Hey, I'm from the FBI. How you doing there? And they asked Brett, Brett, you remember this stuff? And Brett's like, uh... I don't remember this stuff. I didn't do any of this stuff. And Dr. Blasey Ford's like, I don't remember this, right? And, and, oh, my God, I wait, hold a second. Something's new. Come to me. No. You think he was going to stand up and goes, oh, my God, did you mean did I almost rape that woman? Her? Oh, yeah, I forgot all about that. Oh, God. No. 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 You had your chance. It's come, it's gone. And if you're the Republicans, you energize the base because of this. You talk about how important voting is. And if you're the Democrats, you do the same thing. You look out at your base and you say, this is why it's important. Because they can look at us right now and say, scoreboard. 
They can look at us right now and say, we got it all. We control it all. It's our move. You can't stop us. Scoreboard. That's why you got to get out and vote. That's why you got to get out and vote. Now, right now, you've got a lot of protesters who are protesting uh, the potential Kavanaugh confirmation now. It looks like the the vote will they'll have a, they'll have a they have thirty hours, and then they're going to vote sometime tomorrow, and that'll be just kind of like hey it's a whip around is everybody cool with this let's see what we got here one two three four okay we got enough so then potentially Saturday they'll vote 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 vote, and then that'll be that, and you're seeing a lot of people out there protesting a lot of people angry everybody needs to calm down. I hope that today will make a difference. That's why I'm going. I think there are a lot of really angry Americans, and we are standing up and saying no. I'm not angry. I don't have the energy or the want to be angry. I look at life like it's a wonderful thing. It's a beautiful thing, right? Amazing kids. Life is beautiful. Sun is shining. You got rain some days. We're having a good time. What I've asked a lot of people. I even asked a woman. Uh, I went out to, uh, to to fill up my my drink here and get some ice. And and there's a woman down the hall, and uh, she's in the, uh, the the suite next to us. And and I see her, and I say hi to her, and I said, "So, what do you think of all this Kavanaugh stuff?" She goes, "I haven't given it much thought." She goes, "I'm so busy." And she's in that wheelhouse. Like she's a holistic person. She's in that wheelhouse of like, oh my god, the world's coming to an end. The anger is a small group of people who are pissed off because they're being told. Some of them are being paid to be told this, but some of them aren't. And they're being told generally that their world's coming to an end, that if you believe in choice, it's going away. That if you like, uh, you know, the world the way it is, don't worry, he's going to come in. And then climate change is going to it's going to speed up and the world's going to come to an end tomorrow. That he's being told all of these things and they're angry and it's stewing in them. It's eating them. I just don't have time for that. And if he got blown out and they found something, I could look and go, eh, and I move on. I feel bad for the guy, right? But I just, I don't have. But what you'll see today is how angry everybody is and how nobody believes him. But don't believe that. There are plenty of people out there that that actually do support him. And I saw a lot of women out there that support him. Could you tell me just in a word, which one of the two do you believe? Kavanaugh. 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 Judge Kavanaugh. Without a doubt. One word to describe Dr. Ford. A liar. I think that something happened, but I think she's got the wrong person. She could remember precisely having one beer. She could remember a door being locked, but she couldn't remember how she got there, how she got home. That's very selective. If I was a victim... Like she says she was. You think I'm going to go to my politician? I'm going to go to authority. I'm going to go to authority. Was that even a human being? I'm going to authority and I'm going to be like, Oi, Joy Pesci. I didn't know if Joy Pesci was that mad. Are you laughing at me? Are you laughing at me? Are you? Funny wise guy? I'm going to authorities. Oh, it's just the anger. I just want everybody to relax. We used to be such a happy country, and we are, but we've never been more politically divided, and and it's a much different political division. Obviously, with the Civil War, we were pretty politically divided, but with this, it's it's that social civil war we're having right now, and where people are, are fighting for the, the soul of our nation, and a lot of people feel that. What's happening to Judge Kavanaugh could happen to anyone. Young men in particular, I have a son. I don't believe that they are um, going to be able to seek justice. Young boys will be falsely accused of uh, things. You are worried about your sons and your daughters. I'm worried about this country. What this is going to entail gives anybody the right to make false accusations, whether it's a man making it against a woman or a woman against a man. I'm not going to suspend innocent until proven guilty. (sighs) Pesci's pissed. It is crazy. And and you know what? Trump came out and said something that he worries about boys. I worry about my son. I don't think it's wrong to say that. I worry about myself. I said yesterday. In fact, we're going to talk about that in a center. Something I said yesterday got so much attention. 
probably more than I've gotten in a long time as far as just talking about one thing that wasn't so much a like a toss away thing, just a comment. We talked about it for a few minutes, but I will tell you this. I got more tweets, texts, and DMs, and all of them were on the D low, down low kids, down low, if you will. But I want to talk about that. It, it, it was very interesting, you know, because we live in this world of you can't say that, but you should say. Like somebody needs to say it, but I don't want to be the one that said it. Screw it, I'll say it. Three two three five three eight twenty four twenty three at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You can tweet at us. Dollar Shave Club. If you look at all the videos we're doing, I want to thank Dollar Shave Club uh, for making me look pretty decent. If you could smell me through, we don't have smell vision, but if you could, you know. I look good, I feel good, I smell good. Thanks to Dollar Shave Club. Best razors, we know that, right? Dr. Carver's Shave Butter, incredible. They got uh, they got pre- and post-shave oil. They've got beard oil. Let's say you have a beard. You're like, why do I need Dollar Shave Club? Well, they have everything. They have shampoo, conditioner, body wash, uh, hand lotion. They've got uh, hair care products that I absolutely love. They've got everything, but they've also got beard oil. So it doesn't matter what you're doing. They've got something for you. Top shelf ingredients, not going to break your budget. Here is the thing. Are you ready for this? Are you ready? Start today, 5 bucks. daily essential starter set. Amber Lavender Body Cleanser, that's the one I went with. They got the toothpaste and toothbrush. They got several of them. No wrong answers. 5 bucks. free shipping. After that stuff shifts at normal price. You're going to love it. Inexpensive. Amazing. You're going to feel good, look good, smell good. DollarShaveClub.com slash Chad. DollarShaveClub.com slash Chad. C-H-A-D. DollarShaveClub.com slash Chad. I'm going to pick it up where we were living off there. What I said yesterday in the amount of text tweets and and direct messages and stuff that I got was amazing. 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. It's the Chad Benson Show. Set Chad straight. Text the show, 323-538-2423. That's 323-538-CHAD. Someone has to do it. Might as well be you. The Chad Benson Show. It's very frustrating that they didn't do a thorough uh, investigation, that they didn't interview all the relevant witnesses, they didn't interview all the potential eyewitnesses, they didn't interview all the cooperating witnesses. I'm, I'm actually shocked. Shocked, Cory Booker. Spartacus! Just, it's amazing. Yesterday, this whole Judge Kavanaugh thing and the Me Too and I believe her and you can only believe her and how dare you even question that somebody would even say something, understanding that it's 35 years old and it's coming out now as he's getting ready to go to the highest court in the land and the people that are bringing up aren't somebody. You know what would have been credible? If she would have went to a Republican and they would have brought it up. I think a lot more people would have been, but they saw, everybody saw through all of what this is. But the whole I believe her, and I said yesterday, as our show is growing, that we're adding certain elements to the show for the online and the TV and all the other things we're, we're, we're starting to do. And, and one of the things is, I've said, you know, because I have my own studio, I'm in my own studio, I'm around very few people. And there's nobody else in it. I've got my other producers, and they're scattered all over the globe and the universe and, and whatnot. Is I don't know if I want to be alone with somebody because the thing of, oh, what happens if, oh, in this day and age? And that's people are like, oh, and I got so many emails, text messages, tweets, all kinds of stuff saying, you know what? I feel the same way. I got a business. I, I, I can't afford it. I can't afford it. Not that I don't want to, but I'm at the point where I'm scared. I've got friends who have companies who will not hire women anymore, and they've now separated the men and the women in, in the financial world because of that situation. It's it's weird, right? Like, you don't want to say something like, oh, that feels horrible. No, it's what you're doing is you're cya in yourself, and nobody wants to say it. And 99% of the women, just like 99% of the men, find it all to be ridiculous. But what about that other 1% of men who are scumbags and women who will take advantage of something? Because both of them are sociopaths. That's the issue. That is the issue. It really is. And I, you know what? I don't blame people. I do not blame people. 
Look, if you're in a group of a bunch of people, but even at this point in time, being in a group still doesn't matter. And the other thing is, is you could be getting along with somebody for years and then something happens and that person is let go or for what financial reasons, any of these things. And then it's on on you all of a sudden, all those jokes you told for years and she told you jokes back. All of a sudden, those have become bad because the goalposts to move. And it's it's a nightmare. It is. It is, it is, it is. And I get why people are like, yeah, you know, I don't know if I want to do this anymore. I don't, I don't, know, I don't know if I can afford this. And other people will say, oh, I'm not like that. But in their mind, they're like, I'm totally like that. I'm, I'm not, I understand. Am I wrong? And it's wrong to say something like that because, you know, you're like, oh, goodness me, why wouldn't you hire somebody? But the fear factor's out there. It is. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You can tweet at us. Love hearing from you. Craziness, kids. Craziness. So I'll just take a deep breath, have some tacos. It is National Taco Day, and they're delicious. Chad Benson Show. The Chad Benson Show. Independent in thoughts and punk rock in life. It's the Chad Benson Show. I'm here to tell my senator that this is a bad decision for the country and it doesn't reflect the values of our state, uh, which represents and upholds women's rights, native rights, um, reproductive rights. That right there is a woman who went to see Lisa Murkowski. Who who named you, Mindy? Mindy O'Neill. Who named you the spokesperson for your state? This is where we like, I'm here to say that this is bad for everybody. Well, you don't speak for me. Right? You don't speak for me. Does she speak for you? I don't think she speaks for you or you or you, and you may believe her, but she still doesn't speak for you. That's that's the kind of like narcissistic belief that I'm here to speak my truth, and my truth is the only truth. So here is the truth. There it is. Wah. And it 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 counts for everybody. That's a bunch of crap. That is a bunch of crap. By the way, with all of this going on. Let's just talk about the stuff we're not talking about. Iran. The U.N. told us we're being too mean to Iran. China. We've got some issues with China going on, not just trade deficits. We've got little issues with our warships. we got hackers. We've been died to, what, nine of them today? Seven, seven, nine of them? Russian hackers? We've got a massive trillion dollars this year deficit. We're growing it like you couldn't believe The real threat to our nation isn't Judge Kavanaugh. The real threat to our nation isn't that. We got issues with how much we overspend. That's a huge threat right now. That is. But we're not talking about those things because there's no salaciousness behind it. We're not talking about any of those things. And we should be talking about those things because those things are important right look at the job numbers look what's going on there yeah smidge we're not going to talk about that none of it matters right now because this is all that matters and the fight is on it is and the fight has energized both sides but was once seems to be a, a just a just going to be this blue tsunami and potentially an ass whooping by the Democrats that may have changed. The fight over Kavanaugh's nomination could have major consequences at the polls this November. 
A survey out today from NPR, the PBS NewsHour, and Marist College shows that Republican voters are right now as energized as Democratic voters. How big is this surge of interest among Republicans? Well, the percentage of Republicans saying that the election is, quote, very important has shot up from the summer when we polled in July. It went from 68 percent then to now 80 percent, which is almost the same level as Democrats. And that is really striking. Yeah, that is. It is striking. And I think the way that they've handled this has pissed people off. And here's something else that nobody's talking about that should be. For the last two years, everybody who's voted for Trump, and everybody's talking about how this is a referendum on Trump more than any other president in the history. It used to be a referendum on power, but it's Trump now. This, And that everybody who's voted for Trump is an ignorant, inbred, flyover, sister-loving racist who's an idiot, and only people who live by oceans should be allowed to vote. That's what they're being told. They're told that their values are stupid. They're told that their values are useless, that they're old-fashioned, they're misogynistic, patriarchy, absolute crap, that they're just a bunch of morons whose knuckle drags, and they're lucky they can find their way home at night. And they're like, you know what? You know what? They look at Kavanaugh and they say, he kind of shares our values, right? Seems to leave a clean life. Oh, but he drank. Oh, come on. Everybody off your high horse. Seems to live. He, he, he kind of like we are. He's that flyover kind of guy. And now you're telling him he's a destructive, horrible, evil human being. And that all men are bad and that you got to believe everybody and due process is a waste of time. And, oh, you're telling them all this. And all of a sudden, what once was it seemed to be an insurmountable lead in the polls has now evaporated. And should be a huge warning sign to the Democratic Party, because all year we've been talking about how Democratic enthusiasm has been outstripping Republicans and how that could lead to this eventual blue wave. You know, everything Republicans uh, have tried to increase this enthusiasm so far had fallen flat, whether it was tax cuts or talking up the broader economy, even the threat of impeachment to the president. Nothing really fired up the Republican base until now. Yeah. And part of that is because for the last two years, they've been told how racist they are, how stupid they are, how that the mess that the country's in is all of their fault. They've been devalued over and over again. And this Kavanaugh thing has really hit them in the face and it is it is amazing. And I don't think they understand that. They don't. Because they live on oceans. And because they live on oceans, they feel that they're so much better than everybody else. And that everybody else is just a bunch of morons. And that they shouldn't have the right to vote. And their vote shouldn't count as much. And their their opinion shouldn't count as much. And, 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 and all of these things. And then they're looking at this guy. And they're seeing this guy get torn apart. And they're realizing what a bunch of BS this is. And I'm not talking about whether or not it's true or not. Just the way the entire thing was handled. How political it became. And they're looking at their values getting shot down and their values getting attacked over and over again. And now they're stepping up and saying, you know what, I wasn't really going to get involved in this, but I think it maybe I, I, I just might. What do the numbers show about who the public would prefer to control Congress, Democrats or Republicans? Right. All year it's been true that Democrats have led on this question. They continue to lead on this question, but only by six points now. That's been cut in half in the past month. And guess what? All of that movement in, in the past week has been among men. Just in the past week, those men have gone from being evenly split on whether they'd vote for a Republican or a Democrat in their district to now saying they prefer Republicans by 10 points. Yeah. Yeah. And you know why? Because they're looking over there and what are they seeing? They're seeing themselves get bashed over and over again. They're looking at themselves saying, I could easily be Judge Kavanaugh. I could easily be a guy, party a little bit in high school, had a little bit of fun. I could easily be in a position like that. I could easily be 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 told that I, 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 I'm a rapist and every man is sick and tired of hearing how horrible they are. Let me tell you something. Ladies, you know this, right? Not the talking heads that are out there, you know, angry and pissed at the world, you know, sitting on CNN's soapbox or, or any of these other shows. But uh, we're, we're talking about real women out there working their butts off, doing their things, going through. You understand. You get it.
Men are sick and tired of being told how horrible they are. We all know rape is bad. Even amongst criminals. Right? Understand this. Even amongst the worst people on earth, there's a code and a hierarchy. Rapists and child molesters will pay a price in prison. You don't think good men living good lives out there don't understand that? But we have to preface everything. Oh, let me say this first. Rape is bad. Ah. They're sick and tired of hearing it. They're sick and tired of being told their entire life for the last 20 years that the only way that they are where they are is because they're a man or because of this or because of that. It's never because of who they are. You know what the greatest minority in the world is? It's the individual. That's been taken away. Now we're lumped into categories here and categories there and categories here and categories there. And it's ridiculous. And men are getting blamed for everything. And they're sick and tired of it. And they're looking at the Republicans going, I may not believe a lot of what you're saying, but I'm sick and tired of being called the demon. He also stressed that there's um, a month from the election. Any number of things can and have happened in that amount of time. And whether Kavanaugh eventually gets through or is eventually sunk will really have some influence on how fired up Republican voters are. And anything can happen in those 34 days. Yeah, anything can happen. Absolutely true. And it's a lifetime. And between now and that day that everybody goes, stuff is going to happen. Trump is going to cause a stir. Something good may happen. Some bad things may happen. There may be a, a, a tragedy that takes place that takes our eye off stuff or, or, or focuses on something. It's a long time. But it's not just about an incident here, an incident there. There's a lot that's going into this. And it's a lot that people are missing. So you sit back and you go, Ugh, you're not catching on. Because for whatever reason, common sense is no longer a, a part of politics and how politics is run and how things are fought and how things are talked about. It, it, it's, it's just gone. Gone. So you sit back and you go, Meh, you know what? It is what it is. Let it go. Let it happen. We'll see what takes place. Nancy Pelosi thinks she's got it won. Yes, I anticipate that I will be the person with the gavel in hand, but I, don't, I haven't asked anybody for a vote. In fact, I've told the candidates, do whatever you have to do, just win, baby. That's just win. <laughs> but I do think that I'm in very good shape with my caucus. I think they're going to, I think the Democrats will will pull out. It won't be as big as they think uh, a victory when it comes to, I think, Congress. But I think that the fight they have right now, isn't going to go the way they want in the Senate. They have too many seats that they're, they're trying to hold on to. I think the McSally in Arizona is starting to pull away from cinema, which is one they thought they could have. Heidi Heidkamp is dead in the water. She says she's not voting for, for Kavanaugh, but she's 12 points behind, and she's done. They've got too many to defend, and I don't think they're going to hold on to it the way they thought they thought it would. The enthusiasm benefit that the Democrats had over the Republicans has evaporated since mid-September to this point. In other words, because of the Kavanaugh hearings. So the signal now, and I trust the American people for exactly this reason. They saw what we saw. They care about the Constitution. So does Brett Kavanaugh. And what they saw are a bunch of senators and other politicians who do not. Yeah. Tammy Bruce right there. Tammy Bruce. Right? Not known as an uber conservative, okay? Right? She's run now and stuff like that. She's, you get that, not known as an uber conservative, and she's right. She's absolutely right. You, you know, in sports, they say it, it's getting hot at the right time. And this may be the right time, and this may signal to a lot of people out there, get out and vote in ways that didn't. And no matter, it, it, all of the other tunes that they were playing Nothing appealed to anybody. I don't like that song. I don't like that song. I don't like that. Wait, wait. I like that. And that's the thing. They hit the right tune, and they had nothing to do with it. It was actually the Democrats who were the ones that are ginning up and exciting the right side of the aisle. We like the rule of law. We care about fairness. We don't want to be told that we're now guilty uh, until proven innocent. This has been rejected. We're, they're now seeing that in the polls. Democrats, we're going to regret what they've done. It's possible. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Again, long time between now and election night. It'll be interesting to see how this thing plays out. And if there, And here's the other thing that we're not talking about. The Republicans could definitely fumble this the rest of the way. They could. And I think, like I said, I still think that in Congress they're going to hold it. It's going to be fine. So they can pretend that we're going to impeach him and then it's going to go to the Senate and die. It's just never going to happen. 
And I think there is still that worry as well. Uh, but at the same time, I look at this and I still think there's just too much that they've got to fight right now. And the Senate, watching them fight and do the things they've done, I think Feinstein and some of the others have put some of the ones who were, were in a, in a dogfight, who had a chance maybe to flip a seat or to hold a seat, put them in more peril because of the way that they acted, because of how political this became and how people, even on the left, go, well, I don't know if I believe him, but what I do know is I don't believe... I like the way they handled things. 323-538-2423 at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Sleep is mightily important. Trust me, I know. I try to get as much sleep as I can. I work a lot. 16, 18 hours a day, so my rest is vitally important. And when I play, I play hard. Uh, and I need that rest. So what do I do? Well, I've tried a lot of things, but my pillow is the one that works. My pillow is incredible. It is amazing, 100% machine washable and dryable, made in the USA, backed by a 10-year warranty. The more that they look into sleep, the more people start to realize how absolutely important it is for your overall health and well-being, whether it be from weight loss and weight gain or for your blood pressure, heart health, things of that nature. So make a small change that will go a long way in your life. Get yourself a my pillow. Buy one, get one free. This is what I want you to do right now. Call 800-944-4975 or go to MyPillow.com. When you do use promo code Benson, you're going to get a premium pillow for free. You buy one, they're going to give you another one for free. It is the world's most comfortable pillow. MyPillow.com, promo code Benson or 800-944-4975. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter, C-H-A-D-B-E-N-S-O-N. We got your useless fact of the day straight ahead. Chad Benson Show. Welcome to the Alt Middle, where solutions live and ignorance dies. The Chad Benson Show. Oh, that's the sounds of grown men fighting at a peewee football game. Parents are such idiots when it comes to stuff like this. I I go, so Jack plays, although right now he's in concussion protocol. Sounds weird. Uh, considering he plays flag football, but he hit his head, and so we, we, Monday we we're gonna be in San Diego, and we're gonna do the show from there, and he, and make sure he's okay. Uh, but I, I go and I and I and I see how riled up the dads get, and I, I just again, it's another one of those things where it's 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 a kid's game. Like, how insane do you have to be to be throwing blows at a kid's game or yelling at kids and and embarrassing their your, their kids? And you could always tell. At every game, there's that dad who overthinks it. I had to coach his YMCA team the last game of the year. And there were dads who were, like, angry because I let everybody kind of play and we had fun and, you know, and, they like, there some of them were – and I'm just like, are you guys are you guys serious? Are you guys serious right now? That's why I stopped coaching, like, competitive club soccer. It's like, I don't want anything to do with any of this crap anymore. These people are insane. It really is it's it's nuts and and to watch this now the no f- charges were filed but to watch these men it's a pee wee football game in the handshake line go to blows or whatever the last game I went to with Jack's team you had refs who were like you know they were calling over the guy who runs the league so they could complain about the ref and file some sort of formal complaint and I'm like whoa. You know, wait, the guy that's making 10 bucks a game you're mad at on a Saturday? I don't know how people do it. Again, it's part of that anger. We're so angry. Maybe we should do the purge. Maybe that would get it out. The more I watch that, the more I'm like, yeah, I might do it. Maybe we do need a night, uh, you know, to just blow off steam. I don't know. I used to laugh at those those places you could go in, like, New York and... San Francisco and Los Angeles, where it was just a room and they give you a bat or a sledgehammer and you could just break a bunch of stuff and then you get it out that way. And I thought, oh, that's just insane. Wow, those are just those those goofy hipsters will pay for anything. And I'm like, maybe we do need more of that. <laughs> God. Three two three five three eight twenty four twenty three at Chad Benson Show 
is your Twitter. We also have Chad Benson Show TV. You can go check it out, YouTube. We post videos throughout the day. We're doing more and more. You're going to see a ton more of that stuff. Like us on Instagram, Facebook. Follow along with us. We try to, I try to apply, I try to get back and reply to everybody who sends stuff. Here is your useless info of the day, Phil. You, you obviously know this one, Phil, so keep it quiet. If you're an airline pilot, a commercial airline pilot, or a pilot, you must learn what language would that be, Phil? English. English is the language of the skies. Have yourself a good rest of your day. Breathe, America. Breathe. Night, night, Jack. This is the Chad Benson Show.